Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to take a first look at this thing here. This is the Turnergy Evolution, a very new radio from Hobby King. Now, the closest cousin to this thing that we've already looked at on the channel is this thing here. This is the i6S. And when we turn on the Evolution, you'll see that a lot of the features in the Evolution are very similar to this radio here. Now, we've already looked at this radio, so you can go and watch the video there. And the way it works is that if I just kind of go into the menus, here's version 2 of the software this has got the software update on it so that we have a system and a function menu now I'm a big fan of these radios already they're really inexpensive you get a receiver or two with them and they're perfect for multi rotors not great for flying things like fixed wing models but for multi rotors when if you're starting out you don't want to invest in something like a Futaba a Spectrum Tyrannus or one of those more expensive radios this is a great way to start the gimbals the switches and everything is a good enough quality to have a really good flight experience and these things have a five model memory that allow you to bind it up to a number of models as well. Now this is a quite a traditional radio configuration and of course this is kind of a, a, called the evolution for a very specific reason. Now this when you hold it does look and feel like a game controller and I think that's absolutely why they've done it that way. If you compare it with something like a Hubsan controller for one of their indoor quads, then you can see it's very, very similar. Now the Hubsan and those kind of models are what I recommend that people go out and learn to fly on. So moving on from something like this, onto this radio here is going to be an easier move for a new pilot than moving on to a more traditional radio. Similarly, if you're coming from the PlayStation or Xbox generation where this feels more comfortable to you and you're a thumbstick kind of person, then again, moving on to this kind of remote control radio is going to feel very natural for you too. For those pilots out there that love those full-size radios, and I'm a fan of those, things like the Tyrannus I'm a big fan of, this is going to look a bit toyish. But don't be fooled, in our testing, it's actually quite a nice little radio. And it's perfect, again, for those pilots that are looking to get into flying, that maybe aren't as interested in these kind of radios, that want to move on from something else that they like. The other reason that this is quite handy is it is very, very portable. It comes with this little gum shield, I've called it, and uh, it clips over the front of the radio. And what that does is it protects the screen, it protects the gimbals, and the front controls so you could throw this into the backpack and this is one of the things that I've been playing with this on is things like PC simulators it's perfect for that it's very portable it's quite small and it works great before we get into the features and we have a look at this let me quickly show you how it comes in the box so first of all you get the radio itself you obviously get the gum shield and it comes with that installed then you get a receiver. This is the Turnergy IA6C receiver. You just get one with this radio, but this is the one that does have both PPM and SBUS outputs. So again, this is very much aimed at the multi-copter pilots rather than fixed wing, because that receiver is perfect for those environments. You get a USB cable. Now the USB cable is handy again to use it on a PC, something like a controller for a simulator, but you also need it as well to charge the battery because this one does not run on AA cells, which for me is a bonus. I hate running on AA cells, it costs me a fortune. The final thing you get then is the manual, and the manual is not bad at all. It kind of goes through all the main settings, but again, we've looked at a lot of the settings for these kind of radios in some of the other videos that we've already had a look at. So now we've unboxed it, let me show you some of the key pieces on here. Now in terms of the switches and what you get, uh, you have a single power button here. Uh, this is a mode 2 radio, so it's throttle, rudder, elevator and aileron. Then we have a double position switch at the front, just two positions there, and we have a rotary control. Now the challenge with the rotary control is there's no middle indent, so you don't know when it's at the middle position, but it gives you a smooth analog control over one channel if you set it up that way. The only other controls on here are these two switches at the back. These are both three position switches, so you can either use it to control up three flight modes by simply assigning it to one of the channels, or by mixing them together, you can get many, many different flight modes. So let's fire it up and we'll have a quick look at the menu. So let me zoom in slightly so you can see it a little bit better. So to power it on, you just press and hold the power button. 
if all the sticks are in the right position then it'll fire up if it doesn't it'll give you warnings so I need to put all my switches at the top position and then it'll power up the first thing you'll notice is the screen is very very similar to an i6s it works the same way so scrolling to the left will give you access to the menu that shows you all the controls working going into the main screen and hitting the menu icon will send you into the menus. As you can see here, there isn't the two menus on this one, so it doesn't have the same firmware as on the i6s. There's a couple of differences, of course, in this menu over the standard radio, and you'll have noticed one of them straight away. It does light up, and as you move the sticks around by default, they change colour as well. Now, I initially thought it was quite gimmicky until I handed it to a couple of pilots to play with, and the younger pilots in particular absolutely loved it. And Mrs. Painless is also a very big fan of this as well. So there's a couple of things in the menu we'll talk about. First of all is if you can go down here. So you have all of the usual kind of menu things, um, endpoints, channel reversing, uh, sub trim, fail safe, receiver bind. Uh, we have one here called LED setup. Now by having the idle color set to on gives you that ability. If you then turn that off, then you have the ability to set whatever colour your heart desires. So if you take it right to the bottom, then the LEDs almost turn off if you find that's too gimmicky. So you can actually disable them pretty much as well. In very low light, I can just about see an LED uh, through that, but in the daytime it gets rid of them. But you can then decide if you have a particular set of colours that you like. I quite like orange then you can set that up and it also means that if you have several of these at the field uh, with you and your friends then it means that you can keep different colours on there. We'll turn that back on. The other thing we need to have a look at is the output mode. In the output mode this is where you select uh, the output for the receiver that you're using. The receiver that comes with the kit is this one here. This is the Turnergy IA6C that we saw as the unpacking. And in here, you can decide when you have it bound to the radio how you want it to work, whether it's going to be PPM or whether it's going to be something like IBUS or SBUS. So make sure on here you have it selected for the right one. If you can't get it to work with your model, then this is probably where you need to come in to change things. I'm a fan of SBUS personally. So the other thing we did with this is we took this little guy apart. We're interested to see how the antennas were routed. Now to take it apart, I wouldn't recommend that you do this. There's no serviceable parts inside. There are the six screws that you can see. There's also two screws underneath these plastic pieces and these just peel off. They're a bit tricky to get back on because they're kind of held in place. Now inside you can see here that the antennas are all routed into the very top corner of the shell and you can see the LEDs on the back part of the shell and that's what's shining through the clear gimbals to give that kind of LED features. The inside seem pretty well made. There's lots of additional room in here. You can even see the rechargeable batteries here at the bottom that you charge using the USB cable. So in summary, what do we think? I like it. I think for me that does play um, Xbox a lot, this feels very, very natural and very normal as well. Even for pinchers, the way it's all laid out is really comfortable. And the way your finger naturally rests behind means it's very easy to get to the flight controls. The menu itself and how it's laid out is exactly what you'd expect from any of the other i6s radios. And if you go and watch any of those other videos that are in that playlist, we show exactly how to set it up. In fact, we use this menu that's on here to set it up in our very first series, Quadcopter Building for Beginners Series 1. We actually connected an i6s radio up to the model and you could follow along with something like this and do exactly the same. Again, I don't think this is going to be for everybody. For those more experienced pilots that have learnt and grown up with more full-size radios, then this is going to look and feel like a toy. It's actually heavier than you think it's going to be. It feels quite sturdy. And that was the first reaction from every pilot that I gave it to. I handed it over and because it looks like a game controller, they expected it to feel like that. But when they got hold of it, it's a nice, solid feeling controller. The gimbals are nice and the switches are nice and positive too. 
So hopefully those of you that are looking at this on the Hobby King website, that kind of explains a little bit more about it. I don't think it's going to be for everyone, but I think for those pilots that are coming into remote control and that are used to this kind of layout, this is going to feel very natural and provide a nice easy way to get into the hobby. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.